Um, so I think we should probably kick off um, by saying good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this Frappan session of the Cognac Show 2021. Um, thank you to Patrice and to Thomas for joining us directly from, from Frappin. And yes, what a gorgeous day. When Thomas comes back on, on screen again, we can see what a beautiful day it is. Look at that um, in Cognac this afternoon. My goodness. Um, we do have a day like that in London as well today. So um, <laughs> but spring, spring is finally here. So this afternoon, um, we're going to be talking with Patrice, or Patrice is going to do most of the talking. I will, I will be quiet in a second. Um, and we will be tasting three cognacs, um, the Cigar Blend, the Chateau Fompino, and the Frappin uh, VIP XO. All three are XO cognacs, and we'll be able to taste them side by side. So. Patrice, would you like to kick off and uh, begin your begin your your speech, your presentation? Okay. So, uh, hello everybody. Uh, so, before tasting, uh, I want before to speak about story and uh, a part of production. Um, so, to start, uh, Frappin it's still a family business today, and this family have. Uh, a very long story because they arrived in 1270 in this area. So before the cognac, you know, the cognac is in the middle of the 17th century. So it's a very, very long story, uh, but also a very, very rich story. I want to give you just a few examples before tasting. Uh, first example, uh, Francois Rabelais was a famous writer in France in 16th century. Um, uh, he, he wrote uh, very uh, well-known uh, books like uh, Gargantua, Pantagruel, etc. His mother was Anne-Catherine Frappin. So François Rabelais uh, is in the family tree. Uh, is the reason why on our label we put a feather like this. It's ah, a feather the for the writer François Rabelais. Yeah, so this, this writer's plume here. Yes. So every, everywhere in, in our label, we have a feather from François Rabelais. Uh, second example, before the feather of François Rabelais, it was this coat of arm. And this coat of arm, it was Louis XIV, the Sun King in France, who gave this coat of arm to his apothecary. And his apothecary was a frappin. So you know, you, you, you have the king symbol here in France. And the two tree uh, was the lepidodendron. It was the emblem of the apothecary at this time. So it's also uh, an example and a part of, uh, of the story. Uh, and I also, I also want to speak about Chateau Fompino because Chateau Fompino, it's a beautiful chateau in the middle of the vineyard, uh, transformed in uh, 1872 by Henri Frappin. So if you look at the picture, Frappin, uh, Thomas uh, is uh, at the Chateau Fompino. So you can see the beautiful batis, a beautiful chateau with a free tower. Um, uh, and uh, Chateau Fompino is really in the middle of our vineyard. So around the chateau, uh, it's a part of uh, Frappin uh, vineyard, uh, as uh, you can see here. Um, so I have also many other examples. Uh, 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 Gustave Eiffel, the Eiffel Tower man, built something here uh, uh, with a big roof, etc. So it's a very rich story. So what is Frappin today? Uh, Cognac Frappin have many characteristics. Uh, the first one, all our range, and we taste uh, today only uh, three qualities, but uh, we have uh, also a big range. All our range come from our vineyard. Uh, we control everything. Uh, we have one of the bigger uh, vineyards in Cognac area, 240 hectares of vine. And second characteristic, all our vineyard is in the heart of Grand Champagne. You know, the, the map of the Cognac area, so Grand Champagne, it's really in the middle. And we consider that the Grand Champagne is the best crew of Cognac area. So we are in the middle of the uh, best food. The characteristic of the Grand Champagne uh, is uh, the climate, uh, many things, but mostly the soil, the subsoil. 
And the characteristic of the subsoil is a crumbly chalk. And crumbly chalk is very, very important for the water supply of the vine. The rootstock may be down to 10 meters to pump the water during the, the, the summer. So, you know, it's a big characteristic of the Grand Champagne. Uh, in the other crew, there is some chalk, but it's not crumbly chalk. Um, so I speak about the vineyard. Uh, of course, it's the beginning of the story for Frappin, the vineyard. Uh, so uh, we have to pay attention really to the vine growing because the quality of the grape uh, it's very important for the for the cognac after, of course. Huh? Uh, so we have to pay attention, um, and we have many kinds of techniques, um, uh, tradition way for the old good techniques and the new knowledge. We analyze now the leaves, the soil to understand the feeding, etc. Uh, but we have to pay attention to have a, a very uh, a beautiful grape. Um, we started in '91 the sustainable vine growing. It was the beginning uh, at this time. Uh, we have now uh, a certification uh, three years ago to prove uh, sustainable vine growing because I think uh, now and in the future is very important to respect the nature, the different balance between uh, many things like this. So it's uh, it's very very uh, important, of course. Uh, so. Uh, Generally, at the end of, of September, we, we pick grape uh, and we have to produce some wine. Uh, the vinification, it's also a very important uh, moment uh, because, you know, um, the vinification in Cognac area is a, is a very difficult one because we can't use sulfur. And you know, everywhere, sulfur is against oxidation, bacteria, etc. So we can't, not only Frappin, but all cognac area, because sulfur is a volatile element. And then during the distillation, we will concentrate it and the result will be awful. So it's a, it's a, it's a really a forbidden. So, uh, we develop then uh, very special techniques. Um, we are going very fast, uh, when we pick grape to avoid oxidation because the best protection against oxidation is uh, carbonic gas uh, during the ferm alcoholic fermentation, you know, so, uh, etc. Um, the characteristic of the wine in cognac area is a little bit acid because without sulfur, we need to conserve the wine before the distillation, the acidity and the cold weather during winter. And it's also the reason why we have to finish the distillation before the, before the end of March, because our ancestor consider, uh, and it's true, uh, after the end of March, the temperature may be higher and then the, the acidity is not enough. And it's also why that the Uni Blanc is the main variety uh, for the Cognac area and also Frappin, even if we have another variety like Folignan, for example. Um, but uh, Uni Blanc uh, represents a lot because it's is it at the limit north of maturation? So we pick grape before the end of maturation you know, to have some acidity to keep the wine. So it's a very difficult vinification, but it's also a um, uh, very specific one. We can't compare with the other area. Just one example, uh, we distill with the lees during the distillation. And then during the vinification, uh, we have no settling for frappin. Uh, because I'm keen on two kinds of lees, the lees from uh, the lees, so alcoholic fermentation, the yeast, but also the lees from the pulp. So no settling. You know, everywhere in the world, they wait many hours to have a sedimentation, to pump the oxygen juice, etc. So it's a, it's a specific way. And I have also many examples like this for a specific techniques during the vinification, a specific for cognac and and probably Armagnac because you have uh, the same problem uh, without sulfur, of course. Patrice, are you, are you the only ones in um, Cognac that are doing this lease um, distillation or is this is this a common practice? It's not common, but we are not alone. Uh, probably, uh, yes, we are not alone to do that. Uh, but I, I, I speak about uh, during the in the distillery, the, 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 the distillation with the lees, because you know, uh, even if uh, uh, many people distill with the lees, each distillation with the lees is different. You know, <laughs> uh, 
so of course, we speak about distillation. We wait generally many weeks after the vinification uh, to, to wait for malolactic fermentation. Uh, and we have to uh, distill uh, our wine. Uh, so uh, as you can see, Thomas is in the distillery. Uh, so we have uh, six pet still, about 25 hectoliters to distill our crop. Uh, it's a real traditional uh, pet still uh, in copper, made by hand, uh, uh, as you can see uh, here. Um, so you know what is the distillation in cognac? It's a double distillation. You know that. I think it's not. Uh, uh, I have not to come back about the, the different stage. Um, so what, what is important, uh, yeah, there is two things for Frappin. Uh, at, at the first time, um, it's real artisanal distillation. There is no computer who decides during the distillation. My computer are Jérémy, Rémy, uh, Mathieu, and another guy, you know? Uh, I mean, uh, um, it's a real artisanal distillation uh, because uh, sometimes my alcohol content for the wine is higher than the normal in this area because I, 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 I want to find some uh, special aroma. So the computer can't underst couldn't understand. I need uh, my special computer, uh, it's a guy. Of course, um, and, so, they're, uh, so they're tasting all the time, are they? As the as yes, the... yes. And, and especially yeah. when before before cutting before the second, for example, because uh, uh, um, uh, sometimes I want to put a, li a little bit some second, sometimes not. You know, it's, it depends what I want to produce after. So it's a it's a real make by nose, really. Um, a, qu a question, a comment has come in of how long do your human computers last on their battery? Uh, do, they, <laughs> do they need regular recharging? <laughs> but you know, uh, we need them. So, uh, they, they, so they work every time, you know, uh, night and day. So they work during five days and, uh, and uh, go home and et cetera. So <laughs> wow. special, special organization. So uh, after that, we distill with the leads. So, you know, it's not easy to distill with the leads. Uh, because uh, the lees may be burned in a pet steel, so we have a special um, uh, element with uh, to, to wash the pet steel with hot water. Uh, and uh, uh, many times per month, my computer, the guy, are uh, in the pet steel without fire, of course, to wash uh, the, the fat acid around the pet steel, but not all the fat acid. You know, it's not easy to distill with the lees. Uh, uh, but for me, it's very important when you are in Grand Champagne and if you want to age a long time. I will come back about the aging, of course, after. Uh, so, just to, just to interrupt, sorry, are these, um, a question come in, are these the gross lees or just the fine lees? Uh, it's, it's a middle one. Uh, it's not only fine, it's a middle yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, um, generally, it's like that, if, uh, except if we have some botrytis. Uh, it's very rare, but uh, you know, is it possible? And botrytis, we, it, it, it's very difficult to compare uh, the cognac area and, and the other vineyard. But uh, for everybody except Sauterne, the botrytis is not very good for the quality. No, no. So if it's not the case generally, but if we have botrytis, then uh, the approach with the lease will be different, uh, probably. Uh, so, okay. uh, after the distillation, so everything is important during uh, the production, but of course, distillation is a it's very important uh, moment, of course. Uh, so, the result of the distillation, it's a part of the second distillation, you know, the Coeur de Bonchauffe, uh, about uh, uh, 71.8, uh, around that, a little bit less, 72. Uh, and it's a spirit translucid like water. Uh, so we have to age it uh, to transform in cognac. Uh, so I, I want to speak about the aging because for Frappin, it's very important, the aging, like everybody, of course, but very important for us because, you know, all our vineyard is in the heart of Grand Champagne. I have two kinds of terroir in the heart of Grand Champagne in my vineyard, but it's all Grand Champagne. So to make difference between the different quality in the range, it's not the grape, really. It's mostly 
different aging. Mm -hmm. uh, it's completely different than a negotiation who buy different grapes from okay. different crew, and then is it possible to create something different from the origin of the production? For Frappin, it's a little bit different, so I'm very happy because I control everything, and you know, if you control everything, what does it mean? It means you can develop special techniques, you can take risk to, to make something perhaps different, you know, it's very interesting, and you can follow the production uh, to the beginning and the end. But to make different between different quality is mostly the aging for Frappin. Uh, at the beginning, uh, in general, when you are, it's my opinion, when you are in Grand Champagne and when you distill with a lease, you need to, uh, you need aging more than the minimum if you want to produce something ex exceptional. <laughs> uh, I will come back about that. Um, so I have different keys. For, for the aging, the first key is the aging in a cask, the different cask. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for Frappin, at the beginning, the origin of the wood is very important, uh, especially for the new cask. Um, for Frappin, I consider the best for us is a limousine wood. So with a large grain, because I age a long time, so I need a lot of tannin, uh, at the beginning, you know, so it's not from troncé, allié, chair, it's from uh, limousine wood. Uh, if it's uh, uh, the, uh, from Fontainebleau, but with uh, the, the, the grain of limousine, it's not a problem for me. I, I need a lot of tannin at the beginning. Uh, and how do you make cask is also important, uh, of course. So for Frappin, I, I, I have an ag agreement with a cooper um, and uh, to make cask, it's uh, a middle plus burning, you know, <laughs> special middle plus burning of Frappin. <laughs> voilà. Not too much because if you burn a lot, um, it may be uh, dominant in a cognac and I don't want to have a dominant. Yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, as you can see here, Frappin, uh, Thomas, sorry, is in the cellar of the new cask. I consider... And does, everything, Frappin, does everything all, does, do the eau de vie all go into new casks immediately? Everything goes into new yes. casks. Yeah. Yes, immedi immediately, or if it's full, uh, many months after. But, uh, you know, each, each uh, eau de vie, each bonne chauffe, age in a new cask. Mm -hmm. I, I consider, it's a frappant consideration, I consider that the casks are new during five years. Okay. So uh, this uh, row is uh, the, the new cask of the year, and uh, uh, just in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the right, uh, it's uh, the old new cask, you know? <laughs> uh, the new cask uh, during uh, five years. Yes, well, okay. Um, so uh, during this period, there is a lot of element, from the wood, go to the cognac. Mm. Uh, so tannin, polyphenol, vanilla, many elements is the reason why the origin of the wood and how do you make cask is very, very important. Uh, and the cask, the new cask, gives also the base of the color. The color in cognac, uh, mostly, and for frappin, uh, of course, uh, came from the cask. Uh, and it's also the reason why all our quality uh, the three qualities today have the same color. Why? Because all these quality age in a new cask. Uh, there is no reason to have different quality uh, because uh, they age in new cask uh, in the same period, uh, yeah. approximately. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, second level of the aging in cask is middle cask. We call it a red cask. <laughs> uh, red cask for Frappin is a cask between five years to 15 years. Uh, and then this cask gives a small quantity of element from the wood, tannin, polyphenol, vanilla, etc., but not the same as a new cask. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a period for me, from, for me to adapt uh, if uh, I have a, a uh, um, some eau de vie 
with not enough new cask, is it possible for me to pass more in a, you know, I, I adapt. It's a middle level. Yeah. And to finish about the cask, it's old cask. And then uh, sometimes we have a lot of old casks, sometimes very, very old. And sometimes we age a very long time in the uh, old cask. During this period, there is nothing from the wood directly. No. No. Uh, because uh, there is no tannin because it's a very old one. Uh, all the aging is only through gas exchange. Gas exchange is the evaporation, the angel share, the sort of concentration, but also uh, uh, some uh, oxidation, uh, and also uh, oxidation through the wood. So only gas exchange. I think there is also very important in a very old cast for the old quality uh, because, you know, uh, I think in the wood, there is a part of a very old cognac who help the aging of the other. You know, it's the same idea as a fruit. Yeah. You, yeah. you put fruit in a, uh, 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 with many fruit and the, the, the mature fruit helps the other to be mature, you know, it's a, yeah. there is an idea like along. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Um, okay. So the first key of the aging is the cask. The second key um, is the cellar. I have many kinds of cellar. Each cellar have a different characteristic to age. And the different cellar, is it possible to make two groups of cellar? The first one is a uh, humid cellar. Humid cellar is downstairs, um, like, uh, like everybody in this area have a humid cellar. Um, and the aging in the humid cellar is uh, less evaporation than the other. Uh, so the aging is different. And then I want now to taste the cigar blend. Okay to illustrate this kind of aging. Uh, before, before tasting, yes, cigar blend. Yeah, well, voilà. We have the bottle here. Cigar blend. Uh, before tasting, uh, in each cognac for Frappin, uh, so also the SOP, et cetera, I'm keen on the complexity. What is the complexity? Uh, it's not a good word. For the people who communicate because complexity communication uh, no. but it's a good word uh, why because what is the complexity the complexity is when you have uh, a lot of flavor a lot of arom it's very complex and then everybody can have an idea uh, with their own souvenir for some people it's around some people you know because it's very complex to have the complexity you need to have not too much wood because if you have too much wood, it may be good, not very often, but it may be good. Uh, but it's not complex because everybody can find the wood. So I, I, I love complexity. Um, uh, so something very rich. Uh, so for the cigar blend, at the beginning, the first good news is it's also good without cigar. <laughs> That's a relief. Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> so this uh, XO, uh, after long aging, uh, about 20 years, uh, um, I age one year in new cask. So a long time in new cask. So the result is something with a lot of tannin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Compared with the other quality. Uh, and the aging is only in humid cellar, downstairs. And downstairs, you lose less than the other, but you lose more alcohol than water in proportion. So the result of this kind of aging is a cognac uh, a little bit round. We're both know? doing the same movement. Yes, a little well, bit round. Yeah. yeah. So, if you taste it, so it's a very, uh, it's a very complex, I think, because very uh, rich, a lot of arome. Um, and then you can find a, a sort of uh, vanilla 
because uh, a long aging in the new cast, so a lot of tannin, and then you can find some wood, uh, the vanilla from the wood, not too much wood, but uh, vanilla from the wood, but not only. I get, nuts. I get quite a strong walnut um, sort of nose and yeah, that, that, that nut skin. Um, do, you, do, you, do you know what I mean? Ah, yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. And yes, uh, but also dry fruit, you know, mm -hmm. uh, if you wait, because what is important in a cognac also, it's uh, uh, to have an evolution during the tasting. So if you wait 10 minutes, it will be a little bit different. Uh, you know, I think... Uh, I, I've had these open an hour, actually. I poured them an hour ago because uh, I wanted to get yeah. to the point. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, I don't want our audience to do the same, but hopefully people will do this over the course of their evening to uh, to keep enjoying their samples. <laughs> But you know, if you uh, if you move uh, if you move your glass, of course, it's also different with through the aeration. And then uh, you uh, you have some uh, um, some orange too. You know, uh, after that, I think uh, it's a it's a very uh, personal appreciation. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. and if it's rich, uh, you for you it's uh, for perhaps a jam of plumes. Uh, you know, but for me, it's very rich. I can find orange. Yes. I've got I've got a few comments coming through. Um, Jonathan Webb has said dark dry fruit, marzipan, yes. uh, some gentle spice and beautiful balance. Um, so that's a very nice comment. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, and some lovely lovely aromas from Ian Holmes is enjoying enjoying very much the perfume of this. So okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and then if you taste it. You know, no aggressivity because long aging. You know, there is a there is no miracle to to have something good in cognac. You you need to be uh, uh, take your time. You you have to take your time really. Yeah. And you know, it's a very uh, balance, good balance. Uh, uh, a little bit spicy. You know, it's it, it's yes. from long aging in new cask. Not too much woody, but uh, spicy, vanilla. Mm. And what is very interesting, I think, with the long aging for Frappin, it's uh, the, the aftertaste. It's a very, very long aftertaste. Yeah, yeah. like, a, like a, a long top note. Yes. Mm. Mm. Delicious. So, you know, the, the complexity and the long aftertaste, etc., really, it's the Grand Champagne, distilled with the Lees, and long aging. Um, it's not a secret, uh, but uh, 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 it's the reason why I need distilled with the Lees, really. Okay. This is, but this is humid cellars, um, which I didn't really, I didn't really understand the, the the difference between the humid cellars and the dry cellars until I came to visit. But our ground level. Yes. The humidity oh, from the soil, the choke uh, level. Uh, yeah, yes. yeah. And uh, so we have less evaporation of water and more evaporation of alcohol. So yes. we end up with something rounder and fruitier. That's a very Absolutely. basic Absolutely. simplification. Um, but that's 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 basically and, it. Yes. The result is this kind of cognac. Uh, still frappin, frappin style, of course, uh, but more round than the next one, for example. Yeah. And yeah. It's interesting. Uh, I speak about dry cellar now, and and then we taste for Pinot après uh, after, and then you 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 could understand what uh, what uh, what we mean. Okay, for you, it's uh, e enough good for you. Yeah, I think I think that will pass. Um, there is a question. There is a question here saying, is there any risk of over oaking? Um, because I think I understood that with the cigar blend, you put uh, you put the cigar blend back into at the end is that correct or did i misunderstand that no 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 we, uh, we uh, the aging in new cask is uh, longer than the other quality okay okay so more, aging, so more extraction of tannin right is the reason why uh, uh, if you taste it uh, it's uh, no aggressive but it's a it's a little bit more Powerful. stronger than yeah. the other through yeah. the tannin yeah. 
but also a little bit round through the aging in uh, in in yeah. humid cell. And uh, the name the name is cigar blend. So of course many people who don't doesn't smoke the cigar drinks this kind of cognac. But uh, the name is cigar blend because you know. Um, there is a, a good balance between cognac and cigar. Uh, and I consider this one is probably uh, one of the best one for the cigar because of the characteristic of the roundness of the, you know, uh, so it's not for all, I'm not a specialist of the cigar. It's not for, for yeah. all cigar, you know, but uh, uh, the majority of the cigar. Uh, is the reason why the name is cigar blend, but but of course is very good without without cigar. I'm really uh, I can drink it without having to smoke a cigar. I'm very relieved. <laughs> so the second uh, the second group of sellers uh, is not humid seller, but dry seller. Dry seller for frappin. So we have a lot of dry seller. Uh, dry seller is upstairs. Here we Upstairs, are. Uh, so Thomas is in a dry cellar. Yep. Uh, so you know this dry cellar. It's an old one. It's an old cask. It's not a, a middle one. It's a real old cask. And you know uh, uh, Thomas uh, is just under the roof. So yep. you could imagine easily. Yep. Come upstairs. Uh, yes, well, well, Thomas. Yes. Yep. That uh, especially during summer, not only summer, but a part of spring, a part of autumn, but especially during summer, when uh, we have a lot of sunshine in, in France, the temperature in dry cellar is higher than downstairs. Uh, because there is, uh, you know, uh, uh, there is a lot of evaporation. What is evaporation? Uh, so we lose a lot. Mm -hmm. But evaporation, it's also a sort of concentration. The first concentration is a distillation. But the second one, it's also uh, uh, the, the, uh, the angel share. And I consider to get quality, you need to lose a, a part of something, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, the consequence of the evaporation is a dark color uh, on the wall because, yeah. you know, it's a fungus. And yeah. as you can see here, there is a lot of dark color because a lot of evaporation. Yeah. Uh, um, and we have many dry cellars like this um, to age. And then you, you understand easily if I age the same cognac downstairs in humid cellar and upstairs and, or upstairs in, in dry cellar, the result will be different. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so then, the result, the, the result in a in a in a dry cellar, so in the in the warmer upstairs cellars, is that we're going to lose a lot more water. Yes, we lose some. Well, we lose uh, uh, through evaporation, so concentration. But the the second consequence is completely the opposite. As humid cellar, we lose more and we lose mostly some water. Okay, so we're going to concentrate. We the concentrate alcohol and and the, and sort of lose that fatness or that richness and have something that's a little bit finer. Absolutely, okay. and it's funny because you know uh, we 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 need to have uh, uh, one times per year uh, an inventory uh, to put to the custom in uh, in France, and uh, sometimes in the very dry cellar. Not very often, but sometimes, if the summer is very dry and the and the cellar uh, very dry, the alcohol content sometimes go up. Yes, you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, at, the, at the base, for example, it's a uh, it's a uh, fifty percent alcohol. After one year, it's fifty point wine. Yeah. Why? Because we lose a lot of volume of water, and then we concentrate on more alcohol. Yeah, uh, it's not very often, but sometimes it 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 it, yeah. it will happen. Um, and just just because Thomas is standing right by one, I, I wonder if he wants to just show the the wax seal. Ah, okay, okay, yes. Well, are you gonna Thomas. are you gonna describe what that was? Thank you, Thomas. Yes. So um, so today the 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 three qualities it's a it's a normal range of XO. But uh, for Frappin we produce also a vintages. Uh, so we are not alone, but we are not a lot. Uh, so vintages is from one year, and then in cognac area. So we don't produce vintages every year. Uh, um, but uh, you need by the law to to prove the traceability in cognac yeah. area. So then we work with the authorities of the BNIC. And then uh, after, uh, if I choose a vat to make a vintage, be, after the distillation and before the end of March, I have a window. And then I call the authorities and we put the cognac 
in this uh, barrel and then they put some seals. And every time we want to take a sample, we want to pump into the cellar, we want to make bottling, etc. We have to call them. We have to pay also, and then we can prove the origin of the vintage. So in this dry cellar, we have many, many vintage um, of different years. Uh, so it's the reason why you can see the seals on the cask like this. It's a uh, thank you, Kate. It's a good. Uh, these are, these, are, these uh, are all of our, our lovely future vintage, and, and maybe another time we'll do a we'll do a tasting of our, some of our vintage. Uh, vintage cognacs <laughs> for for people if they're interested. So, yeah, this is this is what the red the red seals are um, to to prove traceability. Um, so each one of these is a different vintage. Yes. So sometimes we have mini cask of uh, vintage because we have a lot of vintage. But you know, um, um, I have no vintage every year. I have not uh, in uh, 80, 81, 84, 87. Uh, uh, why? Because. Uh, I have no vintage at the beginning or during the aging. If the quality is the same as a cigar blend, for example, it's not very interesting to put in the market. So, so then I broke the vintage to go to the blend of a cigar blend, for example. So if a vintage arrive in the market, it's because it's good, of course, of course, but also different than the rest of the range to have, uh, to have something more. Uh, uh, compare with the ranch. Yeah. So, um, but uh, I, I invite you to to taste uh, Frappa vintages. It's not too bad. Um, okay. <laughs> so as we can't as we can't taste Frappa vintages today. Shall we taste the next uh, the next uh, one in the range? What I think it, you suggested would be the Fompino. Yes, second one is Fompino. So Fompino. Voilà. And I have a little dinky bottle. I have a little baby bottle here. Uh, okay. So Chateau Fompino. So at the beginning, the name is Chateau Fompino. Uh, and you know, in Cognac area, to put Chateau in the label, it's not the same as Bordeaux. Bordeaux, you need uh, a vineyard and a, a, a vat uh, to, to, vinify, to make vinification, you know. But in, in Cognac area, you need also a Chateau. Uh, so as you can see, you, we have a, a beautiful Chateau Fompino in the middle of the vineyard. So it's the name of this chateau. And <clears throat> I think in Cognac area, there is not a lot of chateau, perhaps uh, six, seven, eight, I don't remember, but uh, not a lot. So it, it's uh, it's funny, but it's not because the name is Chateau Fompino that is good, but it is, is a name. <clears throat> so uh, this uh, Chateau Fompino uh, is quite the same uh, period to age a cigar blend is the same age, you know, but the big difference between the both. Uh, you remember cigar blend is one year during um, aging during uh, in a new cask one year. Mm -hmm. Fompino is only six months, so less tannin in Fompino compared with cigar blend. Okay. Yep. And second uh, element, very important, uh, Fompino, we age only in dry cellar, upstairs, we lose some water, etc. So the result of this kind of aging is a cognac like Fompino, very straight, you know, uh, like a line, like, the, like a diamond, shlock, like this. Shlock. Uh, so it's very, uh, if you taste it, I'm, I'm already getting a real difference on the nose from the cigar to the to the Fompino. And bearing in mind, I've had these poured for an hour now, um, that the Fompino is much more, it's it's floral, it's flowers. Yes. It's delicate. But it's fine, elegant and very, very, I don't know, it's a good word, but very straight like this, you know, shock. Uh, so it's fine, elegant, but still frappant. Uh, so uh, very complex. So the arom is a little bit different than the other because of the aging. But <coughs> <laughs> you know, there is uh, many things for me. Huh? At the beginning, it's a dry apricot and a dry fig. Some orange also, uh, you know, very often for Frappin, in the old ones, there is a, a, a passage with orange like this. Sorry, that just went down the wrong way. <laughs> no, no, no. Drink some cognac. I breathed in. <clears throat> but it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so if you taste it. Yeah, I can, I get the orange, definitely. You know, it's a very, uh, like this, you know? Yeah, like, uh, really focused, like really. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's completely the reverse as the cognac pouf pouf, you know? No, it's comme ça. Hein? Mm. But very long after taste huh? and very rich. Mm. Some candied fruits, uh, <clears throat> some dry fruit. Very, very good balance and very, very long after taste, you know? I love the nose. I could, I could mm. sit and smell, smell that all day. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, um, for me, a good cognac, so not only frappin, hein, but a good cognac in general is something very complex, but also a cognac with evolution. I mean, uh, a good tasting has to give you some emotion. Uh, and the evolution is a part of emotion for me. So uh, you taste now, it's uh, some orange, etc. But if you wait one hour, or uh, it will be different. Yeah. And uh, uh, if you wait uh, the tomorrow morning, uh, also different, but still something. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, um, is it possible if, for uh, the people who want, uh, um, if you taste this from Pinot, uh, is it possible to, to make the glass empty? So you drink it or you put in a bin or I don't know, uh, after. Huh? But then you wait many minutes and you smell your empty glass. Mm, yeah. And it's a good, it's a very good experience because the flavor in the empty glass will be completely different than uh, the flavor in a full glass. Why? Because in the empty glass, there is more oxidation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then the evolution is quicker. And uh, for uh, the, the Font Pinot, uh, then in the empty glass you have you have more uh, tobacco uh, cigar box uh, you know the same flavor in your full glass but after many hours because you need more more time to oxidate yeah. uh, in a full glass but it's very interesting for the people who want to do that because it's a, it's a sort of experience but it's just to prove you that the, the evolution exists uh, when you have a long aging in grand champagne with the lees during the distillation yeah. Um, so some comments coming in. Jonathan's given us another. Um, he's finding this fruitier, actually, than the than the cigar brand. But yes, really, really focused, really. And he says a lovely chest warming happiness, like a hug. If we can remember what the hug, what a hug was like um, from a long lost friend. So I think that's rather lovely. If we can't hug our friends, we'll we'll have some some fompino instead. OK. Um, one one question come in while we were while Thomas was in the cellar, which is um, I think I know the answer, but I'll ask you: um, Why are the barrels upstairs only one high? When <laughs> downstairs they were stacked. So we have many dry cellar uh, in uh, in different uh, place, um, and sometimes we have two levels. But uh, this cellar uh, with Thomas before. Many, many years ago, we had two levels of cask and we, um, the, the company uh, who passed to control uh, the, the, how do you say, the strongness or uh, the, the strength of the, yeah. Yes. And then uh, one of the conclusions is uh, to put only one level of cask in this cellar. It's, it's uh, so, uh, and then uh, immediately uh, we, we <laughs> pump the other and uh, we put one, yeah. only one. I, so thought it, I thought it would be to do with the with yeah, the yeah. weight, the sheer weight on the first floor of of all of those. Because um, actually, this is one question I had, which was how big are the barrels? What what quite, uh, what volume do the barrels uh, Alors, take? It's it's a it's a very good question. Um, so um, by the story uh, before uh, before the trailer, when the, we put the. the the, the, the cognac in a, in a, in a trailer, uh, in a cask. It was a big cask called Tierson. Uh, now we have no Tierson because it's a bigger run, about 50, uh, 550. 500. Now, uh, uh, before, uh, for Frappin, um, the, the cask 
was only in three levels. And then uh, the first level was 450, second one 350, and the, 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 the last one 280. So three capacities. And then uh, I have a new way to put the cask with a, a piece of wood between the different casks to support in the, in, the, in, the, in the bottom, okay? So we have only one size with a new cask now is 350. I consider the best size for Frappin is 350 because of the, uh, uh, the wood, the volume, etc. I consider uh, la, the, this volume now. So it's uh, a perfect the, ratio between wood size. and eau de vie and cognac inside. It gives you the... the so other houses would have different sizes um, and different woods. Yes, yeah, sometimes uh, the other one, uh, house is uh, 450 or it depends. Mm -hmm. But uh, so it's a, it's a sort of detail. But you know the big uh, uh, the, the big quality is a, is a lot of detail huh? uh, generally. Uh, so yeah. uh, so many choices. Uh, I'm glad it's you and not me. <laughs> <laughs> so about the aging, uh, we have uh, four group of seller to age. Because in Frappin, like a lot of people in Cognac area, we are afraid by the fire. Mm -hmm. uh, you understand why, of course. So I have four group of seller to separate the risk. And generally, in each group of seller, I have different quality uh, to share the risk. Um, okay, so it's 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 very it's very important. Um, before uh, testing the the last one. Uh, I want to, to speak about uh, another element of the aging. Um, generally, the first question of the customer or everybody is how old is the cognac? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a good question, but I'm not sure it's very, very important. Uh, why? Because what is important for the customer, for everybody, is the quality in the glass. Because I, I, I can I can explain why and uh, etc. But what is important for everybody is the quality of the cognac in the glass. Enough. Um, so the good question, really, I think it's not how many years. The good question is how do you age? during the period of aging. You know, Cigar Blend and Fompino, I said before, is 20, minimum. Um, <clears throat> if to reproduce the same blend, because it's a blend, you know what is a blend? It's a, what is a blend? The blend, for me, it's like a painting. More you have some blue color, more you have some yellow color, more you can reproduce the same green. And my, my job is to reproduce the same green every time, you know. So to have a, a good blend, you need you need to have a lot of stock. Is the reason why we have a lot of stock for Frappin. The 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 average of the stock uh, stock in cognac area is about seven years. Frappin, we have more than sixteen years of stock because wow. we produce all. So we we are specialists of all cognac. So we need a lot of old quality, but we produce also to to have a lot of old quality. I need a lot, a lot, a lot of young quality because I lose a lot during the age. Uh, so it's a blend, and to reproduce the quality of Fompino. For example, through the blending, I said before it's 20, but if next time I have to put a part of 12 years old to have the same quality, it's not 20, but it's not important because what is important is the result. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the most important thing is how do you age? Because if we you age like a frappin, like Fompino and the rest of the range, during 20 years um, uh, in different cellar, because you have to understand that the cognac for Frappin moves. It's not only one cellar. Uh, I taste everything each six years, uh, six months, sorry, six months. <laughs> so not all the cask, because we have a lot, but all the big <laughs> row, you know. And then sometimes I decide to pump this row in the other cellar, to try to have something different, more round, or and sometimes what I expect, it's not the result, but
But yeah. it's not important because what is the, the complexity is a lot of things like this. And uh, so the cognac moves. Uh, and then when we move the cognac, we put a small quantity of distilled water to make the alcohol down very slowly. And then uh, we, we make oxidation. And then we start blending sometimes before the end. Uh, you know, uh, after uh, 20 years of aging in this way, the taste of the cognac will be more than the real age. At the same time, if I age the same cognac in a big vat like this, without evaporation, in high level alcohol, without uh, aer aeration and oxidation, without blending, without anything, uh, is the same age, but the taste will yeah. be completely younger yeah. than the real age. Not you know what I mean? So, so what is important for everybody, it's the result in the glass. No what the i say or what you read uh, you have to try and then you you have your opinion really uh last one last one allez c'est parti last one so and, um sorry just one one question that has come in is that um we talked about oxidation in the glass um will the uh, cognac itself oxidize in the bottle once the bottle is opened will will the oxidation um take place in the bottle and if so how how quickly does it happen uh so uh, is there is some aging in bottle uh, oxidation uh generally in generally in, in general not <laughs> uh, Except if you have a very small quantity in in a bottle for a long time, yeah. So then it may be uh, <clears throat> still good, but maybe uh, evolution of the aroma through uh, the oxygen in in a bottle. You know. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, you know for the cognac, it's like a, a bottle of champagne. If you open it, you you have to to drink. Uh, to drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I've got my work cut out for me this evening. Then <laughs> oh, no. is, it possible, is it possible to conserve, of course, uh, without aging, but without problem uh, in, a, in a in a bottle? Yeah. Sorry, I interrupted you. Let's go on to the last one. Yeah. It's so beautiful. the last one, the name is VIP XO. So then it's a, a it's a, it's a carafe. Uh, it's a it's a beautiful carafe. Uh, <laughs> For, shaped like an ink pot yes just for for your information so we 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 try to uh, to work on the packaging because uh, the quality is more important but you know packaging it's important too so uh, we develop uh, four years ago uh, this new carafe and the idea at the beginning it's an uh, ink pot from francois rabelais uh, the period of francois rabelais you know it was the idea of ink pot to put yeah. the feeder uh, uh okay so it's a, it's an idea at the beginning okay so vip xo uh for the aging is uh the same idea as cigar blend one year in new cask and we age in humid cellar but vip is older than the other it's about 30 years minimum yeah. so it's not the blend of cigar blend older it's not the, it's not easy like this uh, but it's the same kind of aging so there is uh, one year of new cask but also more aging so uh, it's not the same flavor as cigar blend uh, so if you taste it uh, you know it's a uh, it's still frappant, so it's a very uh, fine, elegant, etc. But there is not the same approach of vanilla, for example, like a um, uh, cigar blend. Yeah. Eh? It's more, uh, uh, it's more prunes. Uh, it's more, uh, you know, dry fruit too. Uh, I get a little chocolate actually on the nose. Yeah, yes, chocolate, chocolate. You know, uh, uh, licorice also. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. No, many things like this, but you know, it's very rich and uh, it's very personal. Huh? Everybody can have a, a, an idea about that. Uh, <clears throat> Ooh, 
my goodness. Hot. You know, <laughs> you know, you know, it's funny, yeah, because it's the same kind of aging as cigar blend, but through more aging and through aging in different cellar than the other, yeah. the result is completely different, you know. Um, so it's round, but also very, very long aftertaste, mm, you know, very complex one. Mm. Ah, yeah, there is also a part of chocolate, I think. Mm. But after, you can find, if you wait, um, you can find also a tobacco, uh, um, Rancio, you know uh, the, 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 the name of Rancio Charentais. So Rancio, it's uh, uh, very difficult to explain, but Rancio... It doesn't translate Rancio. We have to call it Rancio because it's it just doesn't translate. <laughs> yes. It's a sort of oxidation, you know. You can find Rancio also in the old Montbazillac, in the old port, in the old... Uh, it's a, it's a, a very small oxidation, uh, a part of fat acid from the distillation from the lease, uh, on the lease, huh? um, who give this, uh, this flavor uh, of uh, something uh, uh, like uh, tobacco, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, sous-bois, uh, it's not uh, easy. For undergrowth, undergrowth in, like in forest. Undergrowth, yes, yes, uh, for it, uh, not easy in English. Huh? Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, it just goes on and on. I can, I mean, they all do, they all do, they all have such length, but yeah, there's a there's a finesse. It's lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I think it's fascinating how different all three are mm. when you consider that right at the start, post distillation, they're all exactly the same. Yes, 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 yes. And, uh, you know, uh, remember, we come back at the beginning of the aging. It's very important for Frappin because the different style in our range come from not only, but mostly from the different aging. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, of course, it's the same terroir. Uh, is the same, so there is a sort of Frappin style. You know, it's different quality, but it's the same line. You know, um, there is not uh, something uh, poof poof like this and something straight. No, it's a, it. Everything is different, but with the same line of quality, of course. Yeah. Well, that's been fascinating, Patrice. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for Thomas, who has popped back on um, for running around the estate and showing us the the vineyards and the and the chateau on that beautiful day and the cellars. Um, I hope everyone has had fun and enjoyed uh, this session and enjoyed the um, the samples if you've tasted along along with us. Um, <clears throat> it just remains really for me to to thank you both. Thank you, Patrice. Thank you, Thomas. Um, thank you, Emma, who was behind the scenes um, nudging me about questions popping up. Um, and thanks, everybody, for joining us for listening to us um, enjoy ourselves for the last hour, um, tasting these wines and for all your lovely comments and questions as well. So um, I'm going to I'm going to use the Fompino to uh, <laughs> toast you all and uh, yes, everybody. wish you all a very bon weekend and enjoy the rest of the cognac show.